This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. I used Squarespace to build both Basics with Babish and BingingWithBabish.com. On the sites, you'll find recipes, equipment lists, other news, and updates. All beautifully designed, if I do say so myself. Get 10% off your first Squarespace order by visiting Squarespace.com Babish. That's it. What's what? I've come up with a new recipe. <laughs> Can't wait to try it. Hello there, welcome back to another episode of Arcade with Alvin. This time we're going to be taking on the Wagyu Katsu Sandwich from Final Fantasy XV. The Garulesa is a strong and powerful beast you can fight in Final Fantasy XV, and its steak is described as very well marbled and tender. Now I don't think we have that at the store, but the closest thing that's equivalent seems to be A5 Miyazaki Wagyu. We have here a very expensive and precious piece of A5 Miyazaki Wagyu ribeye, which we are going to treat with respect and make sure that none of this goes to waste. Now in my experience, this is usually a nice square of well marbled beef that has been seasoned, lightly fried, and topped with a nice acidic sauce on toasted milk bread. A pretty indulgent piece of luxury that I have never been able to try, so I guess I'm using this as a way to make it for myself. To get started, I'm going to carefully and nervously cut this rye into nice little square patties for breading. Now, all these little pieces that are going to get cut off here are definitely not going to waste. We're going to use them one way or the other to make some pretty delicious stuff with it. Once these nice two squares of wagyu ribeye get hit with a little bit of salt and pepper, they're going to go rest on a tray and go into the fridge just to firm up a bit. Now in the meantime we're going to make the katsu sauce. This beef is pretty fatty which means we need a pretty acidic and sweet sauce to be able to counterbalance that and bring out its flavor. So in a medium saucepan I'm combining a quarter cup of sake with one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of onion powder, and one quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. This is just going to boil for a little bit so that the sake can have the alcohol reduced. Then we're going to add a quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce, three tablespoons of ketchup, two tablespoons of honey, a tablespoon of whole grain mustard, and a tablespoon of oyster sauce. This cooks in the pan until everybody starts to reduce and once it gets sticky this is just going to sit off to the side. Now the breading for our steak is pretty simple. We're going to go pretty traditional with a little bit of all-purpose flour, patting it dry, making sure that the excess flour falls off, going in briefly into an egg bath and then into panko breadcrumbs, making sure to press panko into every square inch. Now once both of these beautiful meat squares have been breaded they're also going to go sit just so that the panko can hydrate and everything becomes more cohesive so that it doesn't fall apart in the fryer. This is a can of spam. Now in the game there's also a dish called the can witch with a very similar treatment except instead of wagyu it's spam. When you really think about it they're actually quite similar even though they're on the opposite ends of the price spectrum. Spam is a mixture of meat and emulsified fat that is very high in the fat department whereas a wagyu ribeye is somewhat similar in terms of the fat content compared to the meat ratio and even if you put them side by side they do look somewhat similar. Spam is just pantry wagyu so I thought it would be fun to make the can witch too as part of this episode. We're going to give this a very similar treatment. Take the meat out, cut it into nice square patties. We're not going to bread this one because in the game it doesn't seem like this one was breaded and fried, just pan seared. There's enough fat in it that's going to help it sear all of its sides without needing to add any additional fat. This is actually very satisfying. It's, it's such a nice firm block that when you flip over the sear it is perfectly smooth on all sides, which I would say has an advantage over the expensive meat that we can cook sometimes. For the bread, I brought some of my favorite fluffy milk bread from from the store. I'm gonna give this a quick toast in the pan with no oil because some of the sugars allow this bread to toast a lot quicker than normal bread. Once this is nice and toasted, we're gonna lay down two slices of American cheese, one per bread slice, because that's what I believe is in the game. And it does go with the theme of trying to save money. We're gonna go ahead and plop a little bit of our katsu sauce that we made earlier that should hopefully go well with the really fatty spam and cheese. Then we're gonna put the top piece of bread on and give this a nice trim along the edges so that we end up with a nice presentation of four little cube bites of spam sandwich. Now visually, this looks like something you could serve for around 20 bucks at a restaurant, which in my book means this is a win. Let's cut it up and see how it tastes. I've forgotten the fact that we are still technically eating a large block of Spam, and it is very, very salty. I don't think this was supposed to be eaten this way, but hey, uh, 8 out of 10. Alright, back to the Wagyu sandwich. I'm going to mix 3 tablespoons of Kewpie mayo with our katsu sauce, because that is one common technique I've seen in some of these katsu sandwiches, and I think that would be a nice sort of element. We're going to fry our now chilled and breaded wagyu patties in an oil of 350 degrees. This is very short, only for about a minute total. We just want to be able to heat the beef until it's nice and medium rare to rare. Once these are nice and golden brown, I'm going to take these out and put them on a rack over a sheet tray so any excess oil and fat can drip off. In the meantime, I'm going to do the same thing and toast two slices of milk bread in a dry pan, just until they're nice and brown on both sides. To assemble, we're going to place one of our wagyu patties right in the middle and then plop a good serving of our wagyu katsu sauce right on top. 
Then the top piece of bread goes on, give it a nice little squish, and trim the corners so that we end up with a very clean cut Wagyu Katsu Sando. Don't worry, those edges were definitely eaten up. Now visually, this is pretty stunning. The bread also seemed to compress to a very thin layer based off of the weight and how fluffy it was. Let's cut this into really small pieces and see how this tastes. Now to be honest, this was way too rich. It just kind of tasted fat, which technically is what the sandwich is. Not only are you eating marbled Wagyu, you're frying it in a little cutlet form. I think for this really nice piece of meat, I would have preferred to just pan fry it. There was no need to bread it and give it another layer of richness, which probably is better for thinner and maybe less expensive cuts of meat that could use that richness. The sauce was a mandatory. This thing had so much fat that if you didn't eat it without it, you'd probably just fall asleep immediately. But let's fry up the other one, make another sandwich, and not trim the edges to get a nice triple decker cross section. Even though I don't think I could finish this, it still looks quite beautiful to me. Remember those trimmings from earlier? We're gonna go bring them out and take off any huge large fat chunks that were just pure fat and remove them. Maybe save them for some potatoes or something. With the rest of the really nice marble meat, we're gonna take these little off shapen bits and we're gonna throw them directly into the pan to give them a nice sear. As you can see, you don't need to put any oil in the pan. These have plenty built in. Once these are definitely nice and seared on all sides, we're gonna go ahead and take these out and use the remaining fat to cook in some nice scrambled eggs. Three eggs, pinch full of salt, throw them in the pan until they're nice and softly scrambled and split this up to go and make two sandwiches right on a bed of nice fluffy toasted milk bread. Now with the seared off wagyu that we have from before, we're gonna cut these again into smaller pieces because I still think there's a little too much fat in here for my liking. We're gonna go ahead and sear these until they get crispy on all edges and have released even more fat. Once we drain these and take them out, we're gonna go ahead and caramelize some oyster sauce. Now this is a pretty salty but flavorful sauce you can find in Asian supermarkets and we're gonna follow that up with a heavy drizzle of honey. Once this gets nice and sticky and bubbly, we're gonna throw back in our nice and seared wagyu pieces and add in some black pepper. This essentially is a quick version of black pepper steak. You got salt, you got flavor, you got sugar, and you got a little bit of black pepper to help give it a little bit of spice. We're going to take this and evenly divide it onto our beds of fluffy soft scrambled eggs. Then we're going to give them their designated bread cover and cut them open. Even though the cross section might not be as pretty as the other ones, this by far tastes the best. To me, Wagyu is a luxury ingredient, and if you have the privilege of buying it, it needs to be treated well and with the right thing. Just eating it like a steak with some salt and pepper is a little too much. I like it in smaller pieces, with a sauce that has sugar and some spice and some acidity, and something like a fluffy egg and some bread to really harmonize it. To me, Wagyu is almost like a seasoning to elevate other ingredients. I guess you could call this one a steak and eggs Wagyu sandwich. Oh, I think it is now time Time for the nap. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. They've been a great partner in supporting the Babish Culinary Universe and bringing my websites to life. From websites to online stores to domains and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for you to build your online presence. They also have SEO tools so that your site is getting found and searched by more people more often. If you want to try it for yourself, you can start your free trial today by visiting squarespace.com babish to get 10% off your first purchase. 